Well, the next trick is actually one of, one of the most political tricks I do. So if you're at all squeamish about politics, uh, you should try to avoid watching this trick and the rest of life as well, actually, because <laughs> this trick is uh, an adaptation of a passage from Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' Communist Manifesto. My assistant there. Uh, oh dear. That is coming back, yes. It's a nice, beautiful little butterfly. Yeah. Um, it's upstaging me somewhat. <laughs> Lucky I'm a vegan. Um, oh dear, some rock musicians are just stamping in there. Um, it's walking on anyway. Um, Oh, this is... <laughs> Welcome to Bradford Nature Watch. Um, it's, anyway, uh, as I was saying, um, this is uh, uh, an adaptation of the passage from Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' Communist Math Manifesto, pages 31 to 37 of the Lawrence and Wishart, in case you want to look it up afterwards, or those of you who have brought it with can follow it as we, uh, as we go through. Any butterflies in the audience? Um, I refer you to the works of David Attenborough. Um, but although I think you'll, you should find that Karl Marx suggests you should use slightly thicker rope. Um, but I don't think I can be accused of revisionism here. Uh, three pieces of rope. A long one, a medium sized one and a short one. And they each represent a different class in society. This very small one here, although it's very small, it is immensely powerful in our society because it owns the means of production, distribution and exchange. This is the capitalist class, the bosses, the bourgeoisie. Sometimes gets a boo, but oh, there's a few in. Yes, from the working classes. Um, this one here, somewhat larger, an amalgam of several classes, small shopkeepers, large landowning peasants, uh, I don't go any further than that in case I offend somebody in the audience, which I may already have done. Uh, this is the middle classes, they don't own the means of production, just a certain amount of property, income, a house, a car, that sort of thing. And this one here, the largest of them all, this is the working classes. Uh, yes, yes. Their representatives are on the front there. Um, and as you can see, there's a constant state of antagonism between the workers and the bosses with the middle classes not knowing which side to jump on. Stay there, stay there. That's a graphic illustration of society at present, isn't it? There, there are places, I do this in all sorts of places, universities, um, sociology departments, and there are some places that get me in, and if, I, if, the, if the students take this bit in, they let them off a term's reading, which gets them through the degree quicker. But anyway, now you've probably noticed, and my friend is demonstrating um, the table here. Uh, beautiful. I can't compete with that. It's, um, it's a moth, isn't it? Uh, anybody know exactly what sort of moth it is? That's not, it's laying eggs, probably. What? Butterfly. Is it a butterfly? It looks. <laughs> There you go, yeah. um, uh, and are you sure it's a butterfly? The body looked very, very hairy, and anyway, oh, this, this is all improvised, this bit, you know. I think the, the, the moth, the Lepidoptera, whatever it is, has... Um, yeah. Take a bow, take a bow. Right. Okay, I'll get through this quick. He's <laughs> used up a lot of my time. You know? uh, you've probably now noticed how good I'm at dealing with hecklers because nobody's heckled me far from the, the, the lepidopterist. Um, so what we're going to do? Uh, you, some people ask me what happens in a revolutionary or pre-revolutionary situation. Then, well, I'll tell you what happens in a revolutionary situation. First of all, things get very really confused, as you can see. The ropes are confused, I'm confused, no doubt you're also confused. This represents 
society in a state of confusion in that state where we just take that conscious effort on the part of the masses to change the whole nature of society from one based on profit to one based on human need. In case you don't recognise it, this is the point at which the TUC tries to settle for 2%. But if that, <laughs> if that doesn't happen, we should find that we have three equal classes, three equal pieces of rope. Thank you. Now, as the rest of the, those people who applauded in the audience, they're, they're, those are the reformists. Because, as the rest of you understand, this is not a satisfactory situation. Where's he gone? Um, the, the revolutionary process must continue, and indeed will continue, with more confusion, until eventually we should find that we have just one class, or a classless society. Thank you. I'll see you later.